It's time for this week's Weather Rewind, where we look back at this past week's weather with a twist. Now, with all of the UFO talk and the headlines over the last few weeks, I thought we'd take a look at some identifiable flying objects that meteorologists actually use daily for forecasting and for research purposes. Even in February, we need these tools because severe weather and tornadoes, they, they occur year round. Obviously, some places are more prone than others, but even here in central PA, we haven't gone without any in recent years. So with that said, let's do a whole lot of rewinding. Climatologically speaking, most of the country is usually spared severe storms and tornadoes during the cold winter months. Now, obviously, the South is going to be the most susceptible this time of year. Researchers joined the National Weather Service in Memphis, Tennessee last week to collect data and to analyze weather. You can see them using tools, some of the weather balloons, a very common one actually used to sample conditions throughout the atmosphere. And just as a side note too, these are used throughout the country. The data the researchers collected will be used to help make important weather decisions in the future to save lives. It might be February, friends, but the South still has to be on guard for severe storms and tornadoes. They even had some of their own over the last couple of days. Now, although it's very uncommon, Central PA can get some severe weather too in February. And we've even had tornadoes in February before. So let's take a look at this. You don't even have to look too far into the past for a tornado in February here in central PA. In 2017, a tornado touched down in Hellam Township in York County. Maybe you remember this one. The National Weather Service confirmed it was an EF1 tornado with maximum wind speeds estimated at 90 miles per hour and a path length just under two miles. Also in 2016, a tornado touched down near Whitehorse in Lancaster County on the 24th. This was ranked a high-end EF2 tornado with winds estimated at 125 miles an hour. Fortunately, there were no injuries or fatalities reported with either of them. Now, these were two of seven February tornadoes that we've seen in the state since 1950. That's when the Fujita scale was first introduced. So keep that in mind. There obviously have been more over the years that might not be included here. But you'll notice that February is tied second for the fewest tornadoes by month. Now that's obviously behind December, which is number one, and that's to be expected, these numbers, just because all the bottom three, I mean, it's not shocking that they're winter months here after all. We get our most tornadoes, of course, in the warmer months. May, June, July, those are all the top three producing tornado months with July the number one, of course, at 222 tornadoes recorded. As always, you can stay tuned every Friday for the wise behind the weather wonders that grab our attention each week.